You're listening to Cross Rhythms Plymouth 96.3 FM and uh, it's life stories. Uh, It's a bit of a special life stories, really. Uh, It is uh, compassion themed. Now, I'm not just talking about the word compassion. I'm meaning the organisation compassion. And I'm joined in the studio uh, by Mr. Rob Fowler, no stranger to us here at Cross Rhythms. Hi, Rob. Hello. Lovely to be here. Great to have you here. And uh, in recent years, you've been working with compassion. Um, lots of our listeners will know what compassion is. Uh, yeah. Most of us know through the fact you sponsor a child, and that might be as much as they know about compassion. But can you tell us a little bit about who and what compassion are as, a, as an organisation? Certainly. So um, back in 2018, when I was um, part of running a church, I was taken out to Ethiopia uh, by this organisation, Compassion. I didn't know much about what it was. Uh, I understood a little bit about what poverty is. We see it all around us. We see it in the UK. Uh, We hear about it overseas. And some of us of a certain age might have seen the pictures in the 80s and the 90s from Ethiopia, for example. Um, But it can feel quite remote. Not quite sure what I do about it, apart from feel very sad about it. Um, And I visited. And what I found when I got there really was a local church, a bit like we have here, uh, doing good things, reaching out to their neighbours in most need, uh, but particularly to children. Mm. There are 365 million children, as we sit here now, that live in extreme poverty. Yeah. Um, Even that word poverty sometimes, you know, what do we mean? Mm. Obviously, money is involved. There are families that live off less than... Two pounds a day, for example, that's not just disposable income. That's just how much money they have to live off in total. Yeah. Uh, Poverty is physical. Um, People need access to health. It's educational. You know, can our children go to school? Can they learn? Can they flourish later in life? So when I arrived in Ethiopia, I saw a local church that had partnered with this organisation, Compassion, and were making such a difference in their local community. Children's lives were being literally transformed yeah yeah amazing well it's it's one of those things that um poverty as a subject matter as you say it's we hear about it all the time like in news or maybe we don't hear about it as much as we should to be honest but when we do hear about it it can often seem like a statistic and it can seem like something that is remote and something that is hard to kind of get your grips to what that actually means with this interview part of it speaking to you part of it speaking to a lovely lady called regina who we're going to hear her story of what it was like to be in extreme poverty and to be helped through compassion so we're actually going to hear a tangible thing but i know you're passionate about communicating what poverty actually is because we can have a lot of preconceived ideas we can have a lot of judgment to be quite honest about what people are really going through um in our country so do you want to talk a little bit about what captured your heart in seeing people in poverty and what poverty actually means from your perspective as well, working for Compassion? Well, the tagline of Compassion is releasing children from poverty in Jesus' name. Um, But we don't just send money because poverty isn't only about money, as I alluded to before. There was a a young man called Richmond who was brought up in Uganda. He's now one of our trustees. And he said, poverty robs children of the dignity of choice. And I think that's what strikes me when I go out to the front line and, and see the worst of poverty is there are things that I believe children should have access to Mm. clean water a safe environment Mm. um, a local church that can nurture them um, aspirations for the future what they can become it'd be interesting to hear from Regina what that sounds like but one of the common things I hear as I speak to people is almost poverty is a voice that speaks to you through your environment telling you that you're nothing yeah. And the future holds nothing for you and nothing's going to change. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we're going to um, stop for some music now. We're going to pick up the conversation uh, with you, Rob, briefly and then pick up the conversation with Regina. The question I'd like to ask you uh, next in very brief, and we'll pick up on it at the end, is kind of how does compassion work? You say it works with a local church. That's really encouraging, but what, what does that look like? I'll ask you a little bit more about that in the next section. Uh, speak more with Rob right after this. You're listening to Cross Rhythms Plymouth, a compassion special uh, of life stories. I've got Rob here in the studio uh, who uh, works for Compassion here in the UK. And in that first section, Rob, you've talked about uh, the work of Compassion kind of on the theme of, of poverty as well, what that really tangibly means and how Compassion helps to address that. One of the things that I'm really interested in and actually I think can get lost in the fact that 
uh, over here in the UK, we connect with compassion through kind of UK reps. You know, we know about it through people in our church or community groups who sponsor kids. It can seem as though it's maybe a, an organization from over here, you know, helicoptering into these places and getting involved. But what you said is actually, no, they get involved in a local church level. It's really what the work they do, the stuff they're doing on the ground is through local people in local churches and the local community. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so currently 2.3 million children are being helped through the work of Compassion in 29 of the world's poorest countries. And that work is delivered through 8,500 frontline churches Mm. in these places. They're in the neighbourhood. They know their community members. They know their neighbours. They know who's most in need. And they reach out to the children through the caregivers with the offer of this Compassion programme which is effectively food, health, education, vocational training, and then some spiritual input and and being welcomed into this local church family. Yeah. But as you said, we get to play our part yeah. all around the world because it's our belief that actually Jesus came to establish a worldwide family. Mm. In Plymouth, over 500 children are being sponsored by people here in Plymouth to some of those countries in Rwanda, in Bolivia, in the Philippines. And what that means is we pay a certain amount of money through compassion to the local church to ensure that that child, that specific child, is getting all the help, the holistic help that they need. And we write letters directly to the children. And I'm sure Regina will talk about what that relationship across the world means for those children too. Amazing. And so without any further ado, we are going to introduce uh, Regina, who's kind of, uh, let's be honest, the star of this interview (laughs) more than me or Rob. Uh, So we're going to uh, bring Regina into the conversation now. Okay, so as uh, we've mentioned, really, the the star of this is Regina, uh, the focus of this Life Stories interview in in many ways. So Regina, uh, tell us a little bit about your upbringing then. You were born in uh, Bolivia. What was life like for you uh, as a young child and and life growing up in in Bolivia? Good morning. I was born in a family of five. We are five in our family. And as a child, I used to see my parents do small jobs and trying to find something stable for us to, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> to to have food, a thing like that. But for them it was hard, especially for my dad. Got frustrated and then he couldn't do it what he wanted for his family, and then. The, but as a child, we were hungry. We wanted food. So we used to go and knock some doors outside the uh, 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 town. And then we used to ask for people for bread or for clothes or whatever they have, they can share with us. And then uh, also we used to go to... Behind the restaurants where the beans are with food, the leftover, they chuck food so we can we could collect the leftovers and have some food for us to eat. So, and then we had to choose between, mom used to say, I have this money, do you want to use this money to buy food or we, we can use to use the, to take the bus to school? Oh. So we used to say, of course we want food, but that means walk two hours to school one way and two hours going back. Gosh. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So so really, as as Rob alluded to there earlier, for you, poverty was was everything. You know, you didn't have enough for food or for school. You know, it was, it was a choice between one or the other. What sort of ages were you at this stage? How old were you uh, at those times? Was that right through most of your childhood? Um, I start, I would say, we started from five to around eight, nine years old uh, when I was that uh, that period because then when I was nine, I joined to Compassion. Yeah, amazing. And things really turned around for you. We're going to we're gonna get to that uh, in just a moment. Living conditions, I know speaking to you off air and, and speaking to Rob, um, family of five, you said, where did you live? What what was life like for you in terms of did you have a house? Did you rent somewhere? What sort of place did you live in? Yeah, we we never had a house. We used to live in a small room, maybe three or three. Um, 
Zoom, and then we had to pay rent every time. But then also my parents couldn't afford sometimes, and then we have to move sometimes every month, every two months, different area. But we always live in a room because it's what they could afford. My parents could pay for that. Wow. And then we move sometimes very far from the school or sometimes going down the hill, sometimes where the bus didn't go. So it was everywhere. We've been everywhere. Also, we've been in a... Zooms where the ceilings or the floor was not, it wasn't something where people should live. Sure. But we had to live there. And then when it rains, the water came, it came in and then we, in the, in the morning we were all wet and then all water came into the room. And But still we had to stay there because it's what it is in that yeah. other time. Yeah, right. So, you know, as Rob said in in his section, so many different aspects to what poverty meant for you. You know, for a start, you were hungry, as you said at the start, you didn't have enough food, had to look for leftovers from restaurants around their bins and things, didn't have the security of a set home, didn't know where you're going to live from one month to the next, really hard to, to stay in any form of education. So looking ahead to the future, did you feel you had a future? What did your future feel like? Did you feel like, well, what, what am I going to do? How did you kind of look to the future at that stage? Well, at that age, I don't, I don't think we, I, don't, I particular wasn't thinking in the future. But yes. I hear people from people saying to us, "You are poor. You smell. You are nothing." And sometimes my brother used to be beat by my parents because the neighbors used to say, your son is dead, this is hungry, he's hungry and he doesn't eat or, or things like that. He comes to look on the beans and he's making mess or things like that. Because you hear from people saying, you are nothing. Mm. Then it's, it, as a child, it's something like that. Yeah. You can't really understand why I'm nothing, you know? Yeah, so not only um, mm. the kind of financial needs you had, but real emotional needs and just the way you were treated was as if you were less than other people. Now, obviously, you said at some point, and the reason we're talking to you is that you connected with compassion. So we're going to stop for some music and pick up the conversation after this with how you connected with compassion and what that meant for you and how your life started to change. So we'll talk more uh, with Regina uh, right after this. You're listening to Life Stories. It's a uh, Compassion special. Many of you will know the organization Compassion. Some of you may even sponsor a child through Compassion. But uh, I'm joined now on a uh, well on on the internet, the powers of the internet, by uh, Regina, who herself was a sponsored child through Compassion. Now, in the last section, we've talked about what life was like for you before you connected with Compassion, uh, what poverty meant for you, the real desperation of not having enough food every day. Uh, not having to choose between basically going to school or ha- having food for the day, moving from house to house, not even from house to house, but from room to room, a family of five living in one room. I think that in and of itself, people will know how difficult that must have been. But tell us now, Regina, how did you connect with compassion and what happened for you next? In the moving, when we're moving different houses or different zones in the area, um, we ended next to an old elder lady, lady. She was a Christian. And then she had compassion at her church. And then she, she used to see us her, how hungry we were. And then she used to call us, come Maria or Regina, come. I have this food, have it. And then we, I, I used to wait for her, her call. Because we know if she's calling us, she's going to give us something for to eat. And then she spoke with compassion at, at her church, and they visit us uh, first time. But my mom really didn't trust in this is happening because when you hear from people saying you nothing, you everything, or you telling. Uh, wrong things for my brother my mom didn't trust so then we didn't go but then they came back again they said yes we really want to help you 
-hmm. and then uh, it's that how mom we went and then it was just amazing it was all another world it was i call always call like a, a bit of heaven a little heaven that is it was just, just amazing sitting on the table half Fork and knife to it, and your plate is there. You have a cup of drink there, and then it's not just a small portion. It's not from the bin. It's somebody made, isn't it? Fresh, and then they ask us even, would you like second? I said, please, let's <laughs> have a second. It was just amazing, and all the activities they organized for us, they help us with. The material to go to school they teach us how to be clean or look after ourselves uh -huh. and they they teach us the skills like can baking or sewing things and uh, yeah they, it was a um, big 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 change we didn't expect it was amazing that's awesome that's awesome i love i love the way you shared that in terms of the context of sharing how other people treated you before that you know that they really looked down on you and people treated you with real disrespect and you know call you names and things like that so i can understand it as you said that it took a while for you and your mom and everyone to trust is this real is this actually happening um so it, you know incredible uh change in terms of physically you know being fed how, how often did you go was it something that you were able to go to every day how often were you able to kind of connect with the people at compassion At that time, it was three days a week. Yeah. So we used to go with my sister in the mornings, about and then the school in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that must have as well given you a sense of structure and a sense of there's something here I can rely on and depend on. And, you know, as you went on week in, week out, month in, month out, it must have felt amazing to know they're always there for me. Yes, yes. And also, if we needed food at home, we they always provide. They say, let us know if you need something, but let us know. And then they used to give us for Christmas bag, uh, some this side of bags of rice, pasta or oil or anything. And then food for us, marvelous never yeah. no one gave us this thing and people said the opposite to us but then they are giving us this it was it, it's just i'm very grateful that i ended that compassion yeah 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 absolutely uh, is it was it fair to say we, we're going to finish this section in in just a second um pick up the conversation after some music but is it fair to say then that your days of being hungry ended the moment you started with compassion yeah 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 that's, that's an amazing thing in and of itself physically we're going to talk about some of the other aspects because i know life changed for you uh as a whole person um you know spiritually as well your life changed and things so we'll pick up the conversation uh with you regina after this you're listening to life stories here on cross rhythms plymouth and uh, i've got Uh, a real privilege of being joined uh, by a lady called Regina on the phone. And uh, she uh, was a compassion child. So someone who was sponsored by the organization Compassion. And that's kind of the focus of uh, this life stories is looking at the organization and their work and what that actually tangibly means for people. If you've just tuned in, you've kind of missed uh, a lot of the gold of the interview. So you'll have to pick this up on our YouTube channel or on uh, listen again on our website, crossrhythms.co.uk slash Plymouth. But uh, Regina, you've talked about the way that you got connected with compassion. I mean, for a start, you must feel incredibly grateful, beyond grateful to that one lady who happened to be a neighbor. I love the providence of that in terms of just a kind of miracle that you moved from room to room all over the place and suddenly you're near this lady who actually she had compassion on you as a virtue <laughs> before it was even an organization she just cared for you and and loved on you that was really beautiful so what um what changed for you in terms of like faith did you did you grow up with a christian faith like from the days when you were in poverty or was this your first connection with with the church with people you know being Jesus hands and feet to you what was your kind of faith journey like 
When I was around four years old, I I used to go with my parents to church. But then, when he lost his job and things went down for family as a general, he didn't want it to go back to church. So all all family was away from church from God. We 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 didn't. My parents didn't want it. But then that compassion. There, there's the in that time was four areas, and one of them was a spiritual area, and they teach us the Bible, think how God loves us, and think that kind of things. And then the, the boy, the man who was there, was the son of this lady, and then he was reading the Bible, teaching us, and then I was like uh, hungry, because when I read, it was a, a booklet with questions about what this God, who is that? And then I was reading, reading, reading. I went to the next one and next, 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 next. I understand how much hunger I was because I wanted God. And then I met him. I am sure till now, he is the only one. Compassion gave me many things, but the big thing that compassion gave me is Jesus. For me, having Jesus in my life, it changed everything. Changed my mind, changed heart, changed the way how I look at uh, life. Yeah, yeah. How I look at others, yeah. That's amazing. I mean, that that's a really powerful statement because a lot of people listening to this who've heard, you know, what you've said up till now, that you didn't have a, a set home to live in, you didn't have food. For them to hear you say, actually... Uh, you know aside from the food and the security and all of that the most profound thing they gave you and the most precious thing to you was jesus that really says a lot um coming to know jesus presumably it was a lot easier and the the way was made for you in a sense because you saw the hands and feet of their care for you day in day out week in week out did that kind of help you to connect with god and, and kind of join the dots of what they were saying was actually what they were doing as well Yes, um, because since I know he loved me, he will love me no matter how I behave, how bad I am, his love won't change. Now, it's, it's, if I am in bad situation, I know where to go. If I am happy, I know who to say thank you mm. because he's always with his arms, open arms, say, I'm here. It not the matter what I'm here. You come to me. You are angry, just come to me. You are needed, just come to me. It's something I have from from compassion. I keep it now and I want to give or share with others this. He yeah. is he loves you. That's it. No one will change it. No one will take. He won't love you less if you behave bad. No. He loves you. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And I love that. I love that you were shown that love uh, through people providing for you. And then they shared Jesus' love for you. Because the thing with the compassion, the providing of the food and all of those things, that could only go on so long. You know, you need to have your own life. And as you said there, they gave you something that will be with you forever, will be with you wherever you go, whichever country you end up in. You know, Jesus being with you is actually something they give you that is so much bigger than any of the rest of it so i love how you've shared that that's really beautiful and well we're going to stop for some music sadly we're getting uh scarily close to the end of our time but we've got a lot more we could uh, talk about i'd love to talk with you regina about kind of what happened for you next uh where you ended up i'm not talking to you in bolivia at the moment i know you moved overseas so we'll talk about what you were able to do in in your life after being uh with compassion uh, we'll talk more after this You're listening to Cross Rhythms Plymouth, 96.3 FM. And uh, it, this is Life Stories. Uh, it's a conversation uh, with someone about their life, where they've been, what life has been for them, and how finding faith has made a difference. Today, a bit special, uh, looking at the work of compassion. And I'm joined uh, by a lady called Regina, who uh, grew up in Bolivia in uh, very extreme poverty. You'll have to go back and listen to earlier sections for her description of what life was like as a child, but found the organization Compassion working through the local church, found real tangible love demonstrated by providing food, caring for her, 
treating her with dignity with with real love uh kind of day in day out really through her childhood you then found jesus for yourself regina you said in the last section that was the most important thing for you you kind of found uh the source of the love they were giving to you and uh you then from an early age wanted to then share what you'd been given it wasn't something you kept for yourself you wanted to share that with others so can you tell us uh when that started for you i suppose why you wanted to do that and and sort of where you've progressed to in your life as well when i was 15 years old even a bit earlier i discovered i wanted to be a teacher i wanted to be like i just tell everyone everything i have everything what i hear I, the change in my heart and mind is really you know and then I, at church, we had at the same way compassion was there was a nursery. And then I asked them if I could help them and volunteer or with the children. And they asked me. And then when I finished compassion at the age of 19, I, I also went to study to be a nurse, a teacher, because I wanted to be. Then they supported me with that. And then I finish my studies. I keep working with them for four years more until I was 24 years old. And then, uh, then I, I realized I think it's time for me to do something else. And I moved to Europe, to Spain, when I was 24 because I wanted to support my family better. And then at first, my mom says, "No, you won't go anywhere. You will stay with me." But then I uh, keep praying you know, after two months, more or less, he, she said, yes, you can go. So I've been in Spain. I, I was living in Spain for nine years. Then when uh, in 2015, August, I moved to UK. But before, before move here, I met a lady, a, a friend who was from UK at church in Spain. She was uh, volunteering in a language school. And then, yeah, she, we came to her church here in the UK. And then at churches where I met my husband. And then, uh, yeah, we are here. We have a little boy, Sebastian. And what can I say is, I was- Amazing. Amazing. I love that. I love how, um, you know, very early in the interview, I asked you kind of what were your thoughts for the future? What were your aspirations? And you kind of said, well, I mean, partly, I guess, because you were a child, maybe children don't think that far ahead, but you didn't have aspirations. You couldn't think to the future. You didn't, it was day to day, what am I going to eat next? Uh, but you've gone from that to, as you just described, living in a whole other continent, uh, married with a child, uh, so much hope, massive smile on your face. If you're only listening to this on the radio, uh, you'll have to check out the YouTube to see the smile on Regina's face as she's sharing those things. Um, but yeah, so I love that, that you, that compassion also, you know, um, they didn't just, I suppose when you became an adult, they didn't just kind of let you go, you know, the work through the local church really genuinely cared about you as a person and said right here's what you're passionate about here's what you want to do gave you volunteering opportunities to work uh, in their nursery helped you get qualified which then gave you opportunities to even look overseas and and just everything they'd built into you and everything you'd grown in in faith gave you the confidence to to move to a whole nother continent which i mean that's a huge thing for anyone <laughs> let alone if you've grown up in poverty so uh, you know, more power to you for for the steps you've taken, and just love how you're wanting to share that love with other people. Well, Regina, it's been a real joy to speak with you. Normally, in life stories, we'd have a lot more time, but we're going to pick up on the final section uh, back again with with Rob to talk more about compassion. How you listening to this can get involved, how you can support their work. Uh, if you don't sponsor a child, how you can kind of go about that. Um, so, Regina, thank you so much for your time, and uh, yeah, wish you all the best. Thank you. You're listening to Life Stories here on Cross Rhythms Plymouth. Final part of a compassion uh, special and uh, well worth listening back to this one if you're just tuning in. Uh, It's been a real privilege to uh, speak with Regina who grew up in uh, Bolivia in very extreme poverty. She described her journey through that uh, in a very moving way and described how she connected with compassion through the local church 
and found faith, found faith in Jesus and described how that was the most profound thing and most important thing for her and has set her up for the rest of life. Um, and she said as well that, you know, her hunger ended when she uh, when she met with Compassion and, and started. Uh, they started helping her, which is amazing. So Rob, uh, who works for Compassion here in the UK, is in studio. So final part of this uh, interview then uh, is to tell us a little bit about then, I suppose, how people listening to this can get involved um and as you said off air you know poverty can seem insurmountable in many ways when you look at the subject it is but uh but compassion provides a real genuine way for each person listening to this to actually make a real tangible difference doesn't it yeah we would say you can begin with a child that's the opportunity that we each have so um we sponsor two children the same age as our two children Anna and James so that uh, Anna and James in Plymouth uh, are growing up with in relationship with two children in Ghana yeah. and they write to one another and we can find out across the world, part of God's global family, yeah. what life is like for each other and encourage each other. So sponsorship, it costs £32 a month. You know, it's not a small laugh. It's a faith ask. So we, we ask God, is this something you want me to do? But the difference it's made, hearing Regina's story, mm. in a child's life. Um, but for us as well, it's part of our discipleship, our growth. It helps my perspective Um the gratitude that came through from Regina's story. I, I need that perspective in my life. Mm. And to know I can make a difference. So compassion in a nutshell through the local church in Jesus' name is giving us a place we can start. We can start with a child, £32 a month. We write letters to them. There's an app that makes it very easy to do that. We can engage our own children in doing that. As I said, over 450 people in Plymouth are currently sponsoring children in some of these countries and making a huge difference. And we're going to put together a little campaign together to say, well, look, over the next few weeks, if there's anyone listening, if you'd like to sponsor a child, you can follow this link, you can sign up and just know that you're making a big difference uh, in Jesus' name for somebody that's so precious in God's eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, It really is amazing uh, that that we're able to make that difference. It's a privilege, uh, really, to be able to sponsor a child. And hearing Regina's story there, you know, you said you start with a child, but I love what she said that she's now through what compassion have done she's now working overseas helping support her family there you go so like the impact is kind of exponential isn't it just through love through generosity through that compassion we're we're not the heroes of the story I think of the feeding of the 5,000 you know and we think well who fed the 5,000 you ask most people and they would say Jesus but when you read the feeding of the 5,000, the disciples, are, uh, they're feeling hungry. They can see hungry people. And they say to Jesus, what do we do? There's no villages. There's no shops around. And he said, you feed them. You know, and, and I think there's something about compassion, which is saying we are helping a child. But investing in that child, who knows what they will go on to do? Mm. You know, the local church is part of this heroic story. That child can go on. And when they flourish the difference that can make in their community and in Virginia's case overseas is profound yeah absolutely so final question then Rob where can people go to find out more I know we've got a specific link for listeners to this that they can log on to to go and sponsor a child yeah wonderful so we set up a little link compassionuk.org forward slash hope forward slash CRP for Cross Rhythms Plymouth. If you go there, we've set aside a number of children who are looking for sponsorship. They've already been reached by their local church. It's not as if you're picking them off the street or leaving them there, but they've been reached by their local church. But we can play our bit financially, letter writing, to ensure that support can be offered long term. In Regina's case, up until the age of 19. And there are children on there. If you go and have a look of varying ages, just say a prayer, ask the Lord, is this something you want me to partner in? That's so, so good. So that address, again, uh, take this, uh, take a note of this, compassionuk.org forward slash hope forward slash CRP, compassionuk.org forward slash hope forward slash CRP.